What do you do when it's dark and you can't see? Well, you simply turn the light on, right? But what if you can't find a light source? This has been the case since the onset of the pandemic, a darkened world with seemingly no light. But what if instead of looking for the light, we became the light? I was a nurse. I had children. I owned a house. I was involved in the PTA, and I was involved in all that stuff. But nobody knew what was going on behind the scenes. And today, people that are in that environment still don't know how to reach out for help. I didn't know how. I didn't know where to go. Thankfully, Tina did find a place to go, the McCall Center for Behavioral Health in Torrington. I think, first of all, really recognizing
Good morning and welcome. Please stand. Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or his ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure, as you well know, that we have a film this morning video, uh, as usual, uh, on the Archbishop's annual appeal. And it's a well done video this year showing the people who have been uh, served, especially within our own local community, uh, Ulrich Boys and Girls Club, and especially Masters Manor, all of which do such great work for our own local people. Uh, we thank you in a special way for your past generosity. Last year was an outstanding year, and your generosity matched your heart. And so we ask you again, if you can find it within your means, to kindly support the appeal, because it does such great work within our own local communities. What do you do when it's dark and you can't see? Well, you simply turn the light on, right? But what if you can't find a light source? This has been the case since the onset of the pandemic, a darkened world with seemingly no light. But what if instead of looking for the light, we became the light? I was a nurse. I had children, I owned a house, I was involved in the PTA, and I was involved in all that stuff. But nobody knew what was going on behind the scenes. And today, people that are in that environment still don't know how to reach out for help. I didn't know how. I didn't know where to go. Thankfully, Tina did find a place to go, the McCall Center for Behavioral Health in Torrington. I think, first of all, really recognizing that each person has agency in their own lives um, and that every single person has the potential to be able to heal and live a full life and to be able to love and experience joy and the full range of kind of, you know, human emotion. That's how staff at the McCall Center treat each and every person who walks through their doors. Even though COVID had everything, you know, pretty jammed up, McCall still was taking people on. They never closed their doors. They always made it possible, one way or another, to get somebody in for an intake to start somebody on medication. It is life and death. It's that critical. Um, and every bit of that has been amplified by the pandemic. And I was reminded of the story of the lamplighter. So the little girl who's looking out her bedroom window because she can't fall asleep and her parents come in her bedroom and ask what she's looking at. And she said, there's a man out there punching holes in the darkness. And so they looked and it's the lamplighter and he's moving from one street lamp to the next and providing lamp and, I, and providing light um, in the darkness. And, and I think about you know this chapter in all of our lives um, where 
We can certainly recognize the darkness. I think the darkness in, form of, in the form of addiction, um, in the form of mental illness, um, and also it, and darkness in the form of racism, darkness in the form of um, loneliness, of isolation, of anxiety that so many people can relate to. I think if we stop for a minute and recognize um, that that is part and parcel of the human condition, then we no longer other people who live kind of with that darkness all the time. And I think the other thing that can happen is that we're all the lamplighters, right? So we're, we're doing the work of punching holes in the darkness. That's what we're called to do here. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't have moments of kind of a, a crisis of, you know, like fear of um, maybe even a moment of hopelessness because it's scary. Um, and, and then I think it's kind of taking that moment, recognizing that we're not alone in this, that there's a divine spark in us and it calls us um, to take action. A divine spark indeed. Especially as people of God, we're called to be those lamplighters, delivering the light of Christ into the world in every avenue of life. And when we make a contribution to the Archbishop's Annual Appeal 2021, that's just what we do. As the pandemic threatened the very foundation of health care as we know it, the folks at the Franciscan Home and Hospice Care stepped up to deliver compassionate care in a time of crisis. Now, we don't make decisions based on which patients are the most profitable to care for. Um, there are many patients that are, 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 don't have the same access to care because of their finances or the insurance or lack of insurance that they have. And we don't make decisions about not accepting patients uh, based on that. So when somebody donates uh, to the Archbishop's Annual Appeal, it helps us to be able to care for all patients, particularly the most vulnerable and, and the ones that no one else is able or willing to care for. At the same time, Focus missionaries at Central Connecticut State University did not back down in their evangelization efforts. Focus is a Catholic collegiate outreach whose mission is to share the hope and joy of the gospel with college and university students. So when uh, the pandemic happened and we all moved online, I actually felt more support and uh, like I really felt the care that has always been there. It's just been emphasized and so um, with that, it's meant a lot because I know that like I have somewhere to turn to, not only just in the pandemic, but like now and like for I'm sure years to come as well um, with the Catholic Center and the campus ministry and the focus missionaries here. And so it's just meant a lot to know that I'm loved and cared for um, in my faith life and that they are looking for, for me to grow. Organizations like Masters Mana in Wallingford have been the lamplighters for those facing food insecurity. When you're making a donation, you may be helping the person who's sitting next to you at church. You may be helping to feed the child of somebody who goes to school with your children. You never know who is coming to the food pantry and that's where this Archbishop's Appeal is so important. It could be the person who's sitting next to you at worship every week. The Columbus House in New Haven has continued to house, feed, and keep safe the homeless, despite COVID restrictions. We immediately moved the vo most vulnerable um, people over 60 with underlying health conditions. We moved them to the hotels. Now, the reason we moved people to the hotels is this is a large shelter. Uh, it, the, the rooms in the back, there's no six foot distancing between the, the residents that stay here. The hotel allows us to put two clients in a room and keep everybody safely distanced. And our seminarians have remained steadfast in their studies, reminding the faithful that even in our darkest moments, God remains. Yeah, one thing I was just talking about recently with some of the seminarians, and also I mentioned in a homily in my parish too, is was praying with uh, a lot of the letters of St. Paul where he's in prison. Like there's a lot of letters where Paul's writing while he's in prison. And the letters that he wrote are actually referred to now by scholars as letters of joy because even in the midst of his imprisonment and his isolation from the world, he actually was so joyful. Um, so it's kind of a good lesson for us that, you know, we can kind of take a note from St. Paul and realizing that, yeah, we might feel, especially people who are homebound or who can't 
go to mass or whatever it is, people who are just isolated um, and feel imprisoned in a certain sense to kind of, even in the midst of that, to have joy because our faith teaches us that, you know, Christ lives, you know, and, and God lives and God is always there for us even in the midst of kind of crazy times as this, so. Your contribution to the Archbishop's Annual Appeal is the oil these lamplighters need to brighten up the darkness. My whole open heart is, um, is, is in gratitude for somebody who can recognize the humanity and the, the promise and the potential and that spark in a person who I think has been marginalized, has been um, hopeless. Um, and so it's so much more than a check. It's that, it's recognizing the light and humanity in someone and, and they feel it um, and it allows us to do the work so that they can reach that full potential. This is something that I think is very important for those who, who don't think they can find the help or honestly are afraid to ask because of their stature or their economic situation. When you give to the Archbishop's appeal, you, you provide hope, you provide dignity, and you quite literally save lives. Thank you for supporting the Archbishop's Annual Appeal and caring truly for all of the souls here um, in this state. I know that the impact that is being made um, here at Central Connecticut State University, um, these students are, they're going to graduate and they're going to join your parish and they are the future of the church. Um, so I know that this investment seems crazy right now but it's gonna have a long-standing impact. Um, and I know that I thank you and the whole church thanks you. We're working together to try to make sure that hope is not lost, that we can continue in this work and that, um, that it really is on us to make sure that we don't lose hope because the work's too important and the lives um, that we're privileged enough to serve uh, require that of us. He made the night a little brighter Wherever he would go The old lamp lighter Of long, long ago He made the night a little brighter Wherever Please stand and let us together profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of my life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world of God.
now having heard God's word, let us offer to the Lord our deepest wants and heartfelt desires. For the church, may we cleanse ourselves of all division and renew our commitment to the mission of Jesus, we pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the practice of the faith, may they discover in this community a place of love and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, for members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals, and all who risk their own lives for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace. And especially for Michael Clorty, who we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, fill us with your love and care. May all people come to know you through what we say and do. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise your mighty deeds 
as we now proclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. We remember in a special way of this Mass today, my good Lord, and all of our own beloved dead. Lord, we ask you now to admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give to them the fullness of life, peace, and joy. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints and the martyrs, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son.
Let us all pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you abundantly, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.